Hey everybody, uh, time for another video. Um, this is an Emacs video, but it is really also focused on my students and I will share it with them um, as something they should check out. Um, as uh, as uh, many of you know, most colleges have gone remote. Uh, we've sent all our students home and we are now um, uh, basically doing things online. So a combination of synchronous and asynchronous using whatever tools, um, um, most of us weren't really prepared for this. Uh, so you have teachers who do everything with chalk or whatever, who've been doing it, or professors who've been doing this for a long time, um, you know, trying to figure out this, uh, you know, this newfangled technology stuff on the fly. Um, I guess I have it a little easier because I've been using some of the tools, but that doesn't necessarily mean um, that what I'm delivering is good. So I'm just trying to figure this out like everyone else is. Um, so I've been using Zoom to, um, to, uh, to like, I only taught one day of classes so far this way, uh, but using Zoom and I'm kind of liking it for synchronous stuff, um, you know, where, where, where you have a mailing list, we have a Slack, we'll see if people use that, um, and, um, and we're gonna see how this goes. Um, but one of the tools that I wanted to share with my students and also with all of you is, um, is Flubits. And Flubits is a, um, it's a platform that allows for um, collaborative live editing um, remotely and that can be really useful when students are going to be working with each other or if I'm going to be working with my students uh, to support them and to work with them um, so um, and incidentally if you if you are um, if you're not doing local development if you're like you're you're teaching a class or you're just learning yourself and you want to do a collaborative environment um, a really good um, site is Replit. I'm a big fan of Replit. And Replit uh, basically has um, online environments for like for everything. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure if I remember, it does have the basic Emacs key bindings, which is important. But you can basically, you know, set up a REPL for, you know, almost any language. Um, and, you know, and you can, uh, so you can type in stuff here. And that should eventually give us an answer. Um, and you can open, you can actually type in code or whatever, but it does the whole collaborative thing, um, which is really, really, really useful because multiple people can be um, editing your file at the same time, which is good in a learning environment. Um, so anyway, um, so that's Replit. But if you're going to be working in a, um, a regular full editor environment, uh, Flubits is pretty cool. So. Um, if we scroll down here, well, first off, you can just go and log in and create an account, and we'll get to the account options, but it's developed, it has plugins for Emacs, for Sublime Text, for NeoVim, IntelliJ, and I'm guessing this means for the entire JetBrains suite and Atom. Uh, it also, you know, has various plans, so you got all these different plans that you can use, but there is a free plan, um, and the free plan well, I've already signed up for an account, so I don't know why I'm here, but let me go to my settings. Um, if we come down to the bottom of settings, we can see that we can get a free plan or we can pay. And um, for the pay plans, you can get private workspaces. So I guess you can share the workspace with other people, but no one else can see it or whatever. Free is just public workspaces and um, you know like right now in terms of you know we're all under the gun it still gets the job done for learning um, I would also say like I know some teachers and professors really have this issue with everything has to be private private repos private this private that because ooh, the kids will cheat um, and you know I've never subscribed to that um, you know I, I want them to work together I want them to see you know it's the you know cheaters gonna cheat um, so if someone's gonna do that they're gonna do that anyway you can lock down everything we're not stopping stopping bad behavior. All we're doing is making it difficult for people who are trying to do it the right way. Um, so I have no problem with this free stuff here. Um, so basically, if you're going to do this with, um, I guess this is with anything, we have to create a file called .floorrcjson and copy this into it. And um, there is an advanced config that I guess I haven't looked at yet, but we can, you know, try different options, but I just copied this into a file in, on my machine, and um, I'm not worried about the the secret here, the API secret, because after this video is done, I'm just going to, you know, click regenerate, and it's going to give me a new one, um, and then I just have to set it up in my editor, 
Now for Emacs, um, it's really easy. All I have to do is you know use packets, flubits, or package install flubits, and then run this. And I did this already, so it's already been you know even if I you know you know it's, it's been run, but I get all these flubits things here that I can work with. Now what I'm going to do here, I, I could just say flubits join workspace, um, but I'm going to first set it up here. So let's go back to here, to the starting things here, and I can create a workspace. And what I actually did, I actually tried filming this video beforehand, and what I did is I went to orgs to create an organization, um, and that gave me some troubles because I had I was creating an org using the org name that I had just deleted, and apparently it hadn't cleaned up. Like I didn't give it enough time to do the internal housekeeping, and so it didn't work. But then I thought, you know, I don't really need to do that. Um, most people are not going like like if I keep using Flubits, I might make a Hunter CS organization and then get all of my my students into it. But I'm thinking this is going to be more useful for students who want to share something with me or with each other. So I'm just going to create a workspace. You can also link this to GitHub and create it with GitHub. But I'm just going to create a workspace here. Um, we'll call this. Um, FB1, and this is going to be a test workspace, and it's not secret, but everyone here can, can edit, they can request permissions, or they can view it, and we will create this workspace. And so I can even, if I want, I can drag files into here, I can, um, you know, to add the files to this, or I can clone a repository from somewhere, um, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so notice I get this readme file here, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, oh, and if, if you're wondering, I'm playing with some new um, new themes. Uh, this is uh, modus vivende, and um, I'm also playing with uh, modus operandi. These are um, uh, Protestilius, uh, I apologize if I get, uh, get his name wrong, uh, who makes uh, recently has been making a number of really, really great Emacs videos. Um, he made a couple of really nice themes that were... Um, very, you know, the contrast is terrific. Um, so I'm liking these very much. I never use a dark theme, but I'm liking this one. But I go back and forth between the dark and the light in, in his case. So I, and also a plug. If you don't, you know, if you haven't been watching his videos, um, I highly recommend them. But anyway, so because I always get questions about what theme I'm running. Uh, Flubits, let's join a workspace. And the workspace is going to be my username for Flubits. And then I called it FB1. Um, now, where I want to save these files to, and I'm going to save them to, let's just save them to Flubits. I don't know if it creates a directory under that. We will see. Maybe I, I may have had stuff in there already. Um, I guess I did. So it says, overwrite the seven remote files. So that tells me I've got, I've got files in this directory. Let's take a look, actually. Yeah, I've got these, which were from my earlier test. One, two, three, four, five, and then I have nothing under share. But I'm just going to say overwrite the one local file. And so let's look at that. Flubits test, and then I'll say, hello, let's see if that does anything. Oh, that's a local file. I have to read me MD. No, that should work. Let's see. And then here... Notice I have uh, this is from local Emacs. And I haven't saved it, but there it is. And if I do save it, it's still there. And I can even type here, this is from the web editor. And this is from the web editor. So this is pretty cool, but it gets even cooler when you bring in somebody else. So I'm going off screen and I'm loading up Atom. And I don't really use Atom. But here it is. And I don't know how to make the font bigger on this because, again, I don't use Atom. Let's see if we can... Um, let's choose a theme first off. Um, open the theme picker. Let's choose Atom Light. So I like that a little bit better. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is let's close that, close that. I guess this is the welcome guide. Uh, package. So um, I want to install, these are packages that are installed, and I guess somewhere or other through here there should be a way to open packages. 
probably under preferences. Um, but I do know that if I come in here, I can install a package. I can open the installer. I'll look at Fluvits. We will install Fluvits. And it's doing its thing. And there we go. Um, it's all set up. So we can close these guys here, close this here. Packages. Notice we don't get a flu bits here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit Adam and reload it. And now, if I go under packages, I now have Flubit. So I want to point out that, um, you know, for everyone always bashes Emacs, it's hard and all that. And, um, you know, here I had to find where, and I guess if I go to preferences, where, uh, let's see, preferences, packages, and then I can install packages from here. Um, it's not necessarily that obvious. Um, whereas under Emacs, you know, Emacs is the, you know, what do I have? Maybe, uh, I, actually, I don't know how to do it from here also. Um, but, but the point is, now I know I, I used use package, but I can do package install with the completion and all that. And there's got to be a menu option here. Now, I'm not saying Emacs is easier, but this kind of should put again put to rest that emacs is so much harder uh, it's just a different interface so here in adam what we're going to do and i i'd like to make the font bigger but um i don't know how we're going to go to flu bits and we're going to join a workspace um flu bits kind of so it's going to be zamansky.fb1 and we'll make the directory that we use here we're going to call it temp let's create a directory Can I create a directory? Well, this is not good, I'm kind of frozen up here. Everything seems frozen. Okay, Emacs is still working. Adam seems to be a little frozen. Let me see if I can kill Adam. All right, let's try this again with Adam. And I, 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 I like Adam. I like, I like Adam and I like the Adam project and all of that. So I'm not, you know, I, uh, I don't know what happened over there. We're just going to try this again. Um, so Flubits, we're going to join a workspace. Um, Zamansky FB1, is that what I called it, I think? Mm -hmm. And we'll go to the directory. We will, it's not letting me create a new directory. I'm wondering if there is a if there's anything anywhere on this. Really weird. Um, it is. Let's go to the Flubits window here. Um, that is FB one. Um, so that's that's okay. Again, I'm not sure why this is. Let's kill Adam again. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I got some responsiveness there. Uh, let's see. So, FB Adam. There, I, so I selected that somehow or other. Let's see if I can somehow get to, I don't know why this is giving me this, this weirdness, but... Okay, um, so I just tabbed through to do it. Let us join. Um, we'll open, we'll discard state and type there to chat. Uh, we are going to overwrite the local file. So notice that it's a similar behavior. Um, read me MD. And now this is from Adam. And there we go. And then I can save it here locally. But now two totally different editors, and I can do this from two different people. Um, really easy to do. So, uh, so flu bits. That, and again, the problems were it was just some weirdness with my configuration for Adam. Um, but 
don't hold that against Flubit and don't hold it against Atom because I'm just kind of, you know, I don't really use Atom, so maybe I didn't do something right. But um, this Flubits looks like a really nice way. Um, I'm going to encourage my students, or if you are my students watching this, I encourage you to set up your Atom account. And this way, um, if we're going to look at and debug code together, uh, this is a good way of doing it where we can look at things at the same time. And I can bring it up on Emacs. You can bring it up using, again, not any editor, but um, Emacs, NeoVim, you know, the, the editors that, that it has, or even through the web interface. And notice here, connected um, Atom on Linux, etc., etc. So that's it for today. Um, I hope you find this useful, and I hope everybody is staying safe and staying healthy out there. Bye-bye.